Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the new upcoming game, Hammer Dongers. And no, this is not a sponsored video, Vice Grip Games just requested that I check it out, so let's see if it's worth your time. Simply put, this is a fast paced 4 player action party game. Each player selects one of four knights, then you're sent into arena for some hammer donging action. The hammer may be your main method of attack, but there are also item pickups and traps, each with various effects. At first glance, this may seem like some type of bomb ran clone, right? Just trap and kill your enemies, but it's much more about terrain destruction. Sure, you can get up close and try to dong your opponent, but it's much safer to try to destroy the ground around them. The entire ground is destructible. Donging will destroy a square, and if you're able to break off a section, that entire area will start to crumble, and anyone left on it dies. The smaller side of the land will always be the part that breaks. And if both sides are the exact same size, they'll both break. The controls are pretty simple, and you'll have dedicated buttons for attacking, items, and dodging. And it's important to keep these controls in mind, as when the land starts to collapse, you may need to perform a quick dong roll, I, I mean dodge roll. As this will push you forward three squares, it can often save your life. You can even roll diagonally, but be careful, as your roll can get stopped by obstacles like pillars. The longer the fight goes on, the smaller the field will get so you may run out of places to go. Now there's a lot more to the game's mechanics, but if this already sounds fun, I'd say download it now. The beta build is free. It can actually be a lot of fun just to mess around and try to figure out how the game works on your own with a group of friends, but you will need Parsec to set up online multiplayer. But for those of you that want a bit more of a deep dive into the gameplay, strap in. This game's super easy to start, but it can get a bit more complex than you'd think. I got this for you, coming downtown. Let's start with how movement works. The map tiles are laid out like a grid, but your movement's not grid-based. So you can take multiple steps on each panel, and even move diagonally. And each panel features soft borders on the edges, which will prevent you from accidentally stepping off the map. You can still walk off if you really want to, and dodging ignores these borders, so you still need to be careful. Next up, let's talk about destruction. Much like movement, your attacks are not bound to a grid. However, the floor panels are. So your hammer actually has a small area of effect, which is about the size of one floor panel. So yes, if you aim at a single panel, you will break it. However, if you hit a grid line, your area of effect will cause you to break both panels. This works horizontally and vertically, and if you hit an intersection point, you can even break all four panels. Being aware of your positioning and visualizing the grid lines will allow for more tactical play, as over time you'll be able to break significantly more panels than your opponent. And you can even use a 4 panel break to cut off entire land sections quickly. You can also break open chests and smash small pillars. A direct hit on a pillar or item box is always safe as the object will absorb the impact. But hitting off center will cause you to break surrounding panels. And breaking from too far back can even smash the panel you're standing on, so positioning is important. In the current build, all panels have the same durability, so you don't have to worry about trick panels or extra durable ones. There are various items in the game. You can get these items from chests, and the items are mostly offensive, but there are also these mines, and even this bow that can't actually kill people or knock them back, but it does stun them, so you can still use it to your advantage. There's also looping doors that allow for more mobility, and even some stage hazards. Some that are automatic, and others that can be controlled. They don't always kill, but they will have some negative effects, so they're worth trying out. And if the fight goes on for too long, then this guy shows up and starts dissolving the stage, forcing the fight to the center. So camping is strictly prohibited. And yeah, this may seem like a lot to remember, but as with most party games, if you want you can just ignore all this high level stuff and still have fun running around donging your friends. So yeah, those are the basics. And like a lot of other action party games, it's best played with four people. 1v1 is still pretty fun, but less chaotic. Three players would still be possible, but I feel like one player may end up getting ganged up on a lot. But regardless of how you play, I still think it's a lot of fun and super easy to get into. But remember, this is still in beta, so they still have a lot of work ahead of them. I'm playing the summer 2020 build of the game, and it's currently multiplayer only, so no single player or practice mode. Even a basic tutorial probably would have come in handy. Pretty much everything I explained in this video I had to discover on my own. Even the official website still doesn't list how the basics of the game works. And while it can be fun to learn while playing, I feel like at least the core mechanics like how destruction works should have been explained somewhere.
Also, there's no online play, and that's fairly common for early builds of indie games, but it's worth noting. However, Parsec and similar Play Together apps work flawlessly. All floor player footage shown was recorded with my friends and I playing via Parsec, and it ran smoothly with no issues. If you need people to play with, they even have an official Discord channel for arranging matches, and I'll have that linked in the description below. But I'd say the biggest missing feature is gameplay options. Sure, the anti-camping mechanic is great, but there's no way to set match length, so he'll be showing up whether you're ready or not. So the option to change round length would be nice, and maybe the option to change how items appear, such as random placement, or even the option to have boxes spawn over time. But again, this is really just extra stuff. The beta seems to be tailored towards testing and refining the core gameplay mechanics, and the devs have already been at work at making improvements. So much so that the latest build actually released while I was working on this video. Anyway, if you want to check out a game for yourself, there'll be a link below. It's 100% free in beta, and is expected to be a budget title on full release. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.